you have to put them inside the bun and then wrap them in napkins and put them in the microwave at 7-Eleven for 15 seconds. But right at 14 seconds, stop it because nobody wants to hear all the beeping going on. Like, I don't want to hear all that. I don't want people looking at that. You know what I mean? And that will warm them up and then you can put them in the container. So. If you're if you're ever doing that, you have to wrap it up because other people are using that microwave. You know, when you're at a hotel and other people like there's a microwave and a fridge in there. I don't know what people have done in there. My drag daughter farted inside of a microwave because we hated the hotel so bad. And then she just slammed it shut and we left. She had to. Somebody had to. I'm Delta Work and it's time for Very Delta. Very Delta fan favorite Kelly Mantle is here. But first, do you want to see me go off? Because I think you want to see me go off. M. Oh. M. Mom! Are you a lady like me? Introspective, beautiful. Oh, are you intellectual like me? Beguiled by a bargain? You like wild times, oh, like me? Are you serving the community like me? Well, if you are, then you must be very Delta. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Delta Work, and this is Very Delta, a luxury public access podcast and YouTube talk show where I look gorgeous, speak extemporaneously, and invite fascinating people to sit on the couch and get Very Delta. Very Delta is for the woman who likes to call her Candy Bergen. But first, let's get into some things that are Very Delta. Go off Delta! Listen. I know you've gotten used to me complaining about all the fast food places, and I'm going to continue to do that because all of these places need to be told. They need to be put in their place. But there is a place that's been flying under the radar for a long, long time. And while I do love them and I am going to be praising them, they still, you know, they're not the best in the whole wide world. There isn't really a best, um, but they do their best. They do their damnedest. And that's Wiener Schnitzel. Wiener schnitzel or der Wiener schnitzel, depending upon what you like to call it, is that place that's like, it's a hot dog place. That's what it's known for. And it, the old school ones have like, it looks like a temple. Like, here's the temple. Here's the steeple. Open it up and there's all the people. Like, that's what it looks like, right? So slightly churchy. It's red and yellow, which in advertising, if you did not know, I'm an advertising expert, I know. Um, those are the colors that attract people the most. That's why you'll always see those colors in really effective advertising. Your eye will always go to that. Shell gas station, McDonald's, Wiener Schnitzel. The thing about Wiener Schnitzel is that they offer like all... The thing about Wiener Schnitzel is that they constantly have seasonal items. And some of those seasonal items like one or two things from the collection will kick around all year round. So for instance, if you drove by my Wiener Schnitzel near where I live, it says carnitas are back. So if you don't know what carnitas are, they're basically, it's like a pulled pork, right? Um, marinated a certain way. So suddenly they've got hot dogs that they're putting pulled pork on. And then they're putting red, a green onion or red onion or something on there. And then they're like, guess what? Carnitas fries. Now, I know that they do them up the street as well seasonally at Del Taco, but they really do them also here at uh, Wiener Schnitzel. Of course, when October rolls around, they go balls to the wall with an Oktoberfest because that's the thing. A brat, a, an all beef dog, a, a regular dog, um, a Polish sausage dog. Like they, they go all out with that. They also have tons and tons and tons of like seasonal dessert thing. So they always have like the chocolate dipped cone, which I love. The thing about a chocolate dipped cone for me is that I don't want to be around you when I'm eating it. Because when I'm eating that chocolate dipped cone, it's a race to not get the vanilla ice cream to melt all over the place. So if I'm eating the chocolate dipped cone, I am really, I'm really servicing it. Like I go there with my mouth. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I really like I, I go there about an ice cream cone that's dipped in chocolate. I'm not afraid, but I am afraid of you seeing me do it because I don't want you to really know what this mouth do. I know, you know, 
that the main thing that this mouth does is hurt your feelings. But it also can fuck up an ice cream cone. And that chocolate dipped cone at Wiener Schnitzel goes off because it's hot, right? And it turns into a shell. And then as soon as you bite it, it starts tearing up and all that ice cream starts coming out. So then you're licking it, right? And then you're like slapping it and then you're flipping it and then you rub it down. Like you go in on the cone because you don't want it all over the place, right? I mean, at least not in the beginning. Um, so I want to really take care of that. But here's the thing. You don't have to just have chocolate because you can have it dipped in strawberry. You can have it dipped in sometimes caramel. They have the sauces. Like some restaurants, who's the one? Al Arby's says, we have the meats. And they do. But Wiener Schnitzel has the desserts. They have the carnitas. Some days they're like, Beer battered fish. You want a beer battered fish hot dog? Let's do it. It's Lent. We're going to have it out. Then the next time you turn around, they're like, guess what? It's all about blue raspberry, whatever. They're pouring blue raspberry sauce on fries. They're putting a little bit of chicken nuggets on top of it. They want your kids to be happy. They've got something for them. Everything is a celebration there. Everything is, uh, everything is a special promo. What do you want? Do you want Lucky Charms milkshakes? We've got it for you because they'll bring them out. They'll bring out milkshakes that have anything you want. It wouldn't surprise me if I was at Wiener Schnitzel and they ground up a hot dog and put it in a milkshake. And it would probably not surprise you that I would buy it just to taste it. I know I wouldn't like it. And so I would report that to you. Um, but I would try it. One time a few years ago at Walmart, they had hot dog flavored potato chips and I tried them. They were vomitous. They were the grossest things ever, but I had to try it. You know what I mean? I'm a chip connoisseur. I understand um, crisps if you're in the UK. Um, I love Wiener Schnitzel. I actually, I should have it on in a future Very Delta episode. I will wear it. When I was in high school, I worked at Wiener Schnitzel. I had a wiener dude attitude and I have the badge to prove it. My boss's name was Fred and he always used to go, are you there for me? Are you there for me? Cause you know, wiener schnitzel is small inside. They're little. And so he would always come up to us. If you were like cooking the fries or you were at the window, he's all, come on, be there for me. Come on. Are you there for me? Hey Gabe, are you there for me? That's what he would always say. And that kept us going. And I remember having a good time there. I liked working in that environment. It was just a little bit, it was small, but I love, a boss that's really proactive in that way. So I did like that. Also, if you didn't know, those wiener schnitzels that go up to a point like that, the office is at the top. They drop down a ladder and you have to climb up there to go like, you know, do your shit, cash in your money or whatever. But wiener schnitzel, baby, they will do candy. They'll just get candy, crush it up and put it on tater tots and serve it to you. And they're like, guess what? The theme for, t like they just pull the theme out of the air. I feel like it reminds me of, Vita Boem and Noxima Jackson sitting outside of that little bar in Spidersville in the movie to Wong Fu. Thanks for everything. Julie Newmar. And they said, what happens here? And the lady goes, well, we have a strawberry social. And they said, well, what's the theme? And she goes, we don't know what that means. And they said, well, you have to have a theme for a party. And they said, well, we grow strawberries because it's a strawberry social. And somebody said, oh, they grow wild out here. And Noxima said, red and wild. That's your theme. And I think that's what happens at corporate, at Wiener Schnitzel. They're just like, hey, what do we have going on? What do we get a deal on? And they're like, I don't know. We got a deal on uh, Pennzoil, 30 grade weight oil. And we also have a lot of red onion. And they're like, oily onions. That's your theme. And they're like, what are we going to do with it? I don't know. Let's do a black milkshake and then we'll top it with crispy fried red onion. And they push it out there and people are like, mm, isn't this good? Because you don't want to hurt the feelings of Wiener Schnitzel because at even if it's fucked up, like they are trying, they are really trying there. They have a contract with Pepsi. I get it. But some of the fun stuff that they have there is just, it's, it's almost... It's almost like a candy land in a way. It's like Willy Wonka. It's like, 
nothing is off limits at Wiener Schnitzel. Everything is a concept. And it's not just like we're bringing out milkshakes. It's like something goes with it. So there's going to be a hot dog version of it. There's going to be a milkshake version of it. There's going to be a, I don't know, maybe they even have breakfast food. I've never thought about breakfast food at Wiener Schnitzel. I would eat breakfast food. I think they should bring out something that my family has always done. You may laugh at it. You may think it's like low rent or whatever, but it's fucking good. So don't laugh. Um, Huevo con weenie. Huevo con weenie basically means that you get a hot dog and you slice them up into little medallions. You fry them in a pan until they get nice and crispy. And then you throw in like a couple of eggs that have already been scrambled in a bowl and you cook it and it's like a hot dog omelet. It's so good. Wiener schnitzel, you need to bring that out. I'm telling you, nobody's doing that. You could do a full egg, the th egg heaven. That's your theme. Egg heaven. And we will do uh, that, that omelet. Uh, it'll be on like, um, it could be in a hot dog bun that we put on the grill. And then we open it up and then we put that omelet. So it's like a bun omelet storyline. That's an option. Um, I would say, I know you like to introduce a dessert. I'm going to say instead of a dessert, we do like a loaded hot dog tots. Loaded hot dog tots. Um, your fries are usually really good too. I will say if they're cooked right, they're good. Um, we put on there the eggs. We cook the eggs like, like we just said, the weenies cooked them down. We maybe put some onion in there. We do egg. Once it's all done, we sort of chop it real fast and then put that on top of the tater tots with a drizzle of ketchup. You already have. And that's the thing with these things is you have to already have most of this stuff on hand, right? You have tater tots on hand. You don't need to order that. You have the hot dogs on hand. You don't have to order that. You have ketchup. If you design this shit properly, it would be so good. Nobody is doing huevo con weenie and you need to do it at Wiener Schnitzel. It's correct. I'm telling you, people are going to love it. They're going to love it. I love it. <laughs> I don't have any more. Do you want to see me take a break? Because I think you want to see me take a break. The wiener schnitzel is what I call the penis. Mm. And <laughs> it's one of my favorite words in the world. The wiener schnitzel. Is the but I've never actually had a wiener schnitzel that I know of. Really? Yeah. But I love calling my man's penis a wiener schnitzel. We're going to have to talk about that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he'll Are love that. Are we good? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I want you to laugh. I want you to keep laughing, and I want you to laugh at whatever the fuck. People need to understand this shit. What? Why? They, everyone needs to understand <laughs> everything about Kelly Mantle is important. <laughs> right? Nothing about Kelly Mantle is important. Oh, but that's Are hilarious. So let's act like it is. Let's act like it is? Yes. Let's just act like it is for an hour. Please welcome the star of the upcoming tour, An Evening Without Kelly Mantle. It's very Delta fan favorite and our new spirituality and wellness correspondent, Kelly Mantle. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, you are fan favorite. People, like, constantly ask, when is Kelly going to be on the show? I wow. literally, on YouTube, Thank you. in text messages, people love you. I mean, I love you. I've known you forever. I feel like I can remember um, the first time that I ever like one-on-one -on -one was talking to you was we did this charity event, maybe like 2002, 2003. Mama was there and your band Mantle was performing. Oh, really? Yeah. Was it the one that Hollywood Lawn was at? Maybe, yes. Yes, 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 yes it was. I remember that. Oh yeah. my gosh, and Chad Michaels uh -huh. was there. Hollywood Lawn took my face into her hands and she said, oh, you look like a young Sophia Loren. Ooh, I and love that. And I'm like, that. oh, Hollywood Lawn, you have no idea. She was, those Andy Warhol, um, what's his name? Uh, 
Peter Murphy, mm -hmm. uh, the director. It's not Peter Murphy, but it's something. Um, those movies. Oh my God, they're so good. Murphy. Hollywood Lawn and, and Candy Darling and Joe D'Alessandro. Have you ever seen those? No. <gasps> Girl, no, just get sin. stoned one night and just binge stoned. all of the Andy Warhol movies. Tell me about stoned. Oh, stop it. How really? do you do that? You want to get stoned right now? How do you do that? Let's do it. I have a joint somewhere. I know you do. You have everything up your sleeve. Speaking I of do. up your sleeve, the outfit is everything. Thank you. I really think, I hope people get to see the shoes because oh, can that's you a see specific shoe? shoe. It is a very specific shoe. And I must say that the shoe was bought before the outfit. So it was one of those happy accidents. Yeah that they all came together. This is just a little summer, uh, you know, evening look for me out on the beach. Uh -huh. you know? I feel like you could repurpose that shoe with black tights Ooh. and a black mini dress. Oh, yeah. Right? And then the stacked bangle that's like similar in color. Ooh, I love that. I love that too. I love, I love that. bangles, honey. I love yeah. stacked bangles. Stacked. Well, you're so thin. You have thin, beautiful, thin wrists. So you can, you don't have a struggle looking for a bangle, I don't think. No, I have very thin wrists and I have these old 90 year old Madonna hands. Look, I have I the have same those ones. old man hands. Oh my God, your ring. What is this, this old ring? Thing? What is that? Just a little, uh, like a, like a black, uh, panther. Oh, I love that. You know? She's ready to attack at any moment. Ready to honey. attack it. Well, we, we are, some people, cougars. Uh huh. Right. We're not really Black Panthers, but we we could be cougars. Ooh, I like that. I like it too. Um. So I want to say I remember the first time I ever saw you. I don't know if we actually met this night, and I think I've told you this story before. Um, but it was Showgirls. Okay. Um. Or yeah, uh, Dream Girl. What am I trying to say? Oh, Dream Girls. Dream uh -huh. Girls. Showgirls at Range. Uh -huh. Was that on a Monday or Tuesday? Oh, we were Tuesday nights. Tuesday yeah. nights. I had just moved to L.A. And I was meeting a friend out for a cocktail and I was at the bar getting a drink and the hostess said, welcome to the stage, Delta work. And I heard, and the dog ate, got drunk again oh, last yeah. night. And the king and queen of the Waltz Club team had another fight. Yeah. And I thought, what bitch is doing Maria McKee at a drag show on a Tuesday night in WeHo? I love that you remember that. You know, oh Maria, Ma Maria McKee is on our wish list as a guest. I made, uh, I'd always been a fan, and I loved love. that you knew who she was um, as a fan of like Lone Justice, of course. And yes. uh, Maria McKee is maybe, if you're out there watching this, I know we've had a conversation yes. about you coming here. And she's been very like proactive. She was like, let's do it. Like, let's, we'll figure oh, yeah. it out. We and, started following each other on Instagram, and she is just a wealth of knowledge and education about yeah. the LGBTQ she is. plus movement. And uh, one of my favorite songs of hers is that one from the Pulp Fiction soundtrack, the uh, If Love's a Red Dress. Yeah. Well, hang me in red. Yeah, it's the, it's a great, oh, great song. So good. She has that uh, an amazing account, uh, the See Me Safe Fund. Which is, yes. um, yeah, uh, yes. it's, a, it's very, very, very important. Oh, you've got to have her on here. Yeah. yeah with Kiki. She's fierce. When, during the pandemic, um, she was doing a few things like to, to raise money for the See Me Safe Fund, which is uh, uh, protects trans people mm -hmm. is, is the whole idea. Yep. And um, she did a thing where she was auctioning off writing lyrics for songs that like the, your favorite lyric. And I, I won one of the auctions. Did you really? Yeah. That's and I, so cool. my song was... Um, my Girlhood Among the Outlaws. Oh, which is, yes. I still have it. I got it from uh, my friend. I want to keep it for myself, but I got it as a gift, and I still oh, haven't sent that gift off. But I love that. Maria McKee, the best. Maria McKee. And this the one best. was doing a direct show. And then I saw you in the parking lot of the Yukon Mining Company afterwards, and I thought, oh, I like this bitch. Yeah. She a gutter slut like me, honey. <laughs> <laughs> she, she down in the dirty gutter, Haven't honey. we been many women through our lives? Girls, so many women. Right. So many women. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. I have gone from gutter slut to marine wife. I mean, you know. <laughs> You name it, Annie. I've been that woman. <laughs> Have you uh, heard of people call a, t a period of time the Kelly Mantle Renaissance the mantle sons? I have not heard the mantle songs. I love that. Yeah. I love that. And I love that I, I did see a tweet um, a, around the time that I started touring with uh, Trixie and Katya that said the Renaissance. And I said, I love that term so much more than reinvention right. or 
or come back or something like that. Because, honey, listen, I mean, I'm an artist through and through. I'm a show pony, you know. Right. And so creativity and creating uh, for me is like water. I need it to survive. Mm -hmm. And so whether I'm at a high in my career or a low in my career, you can rest assured that Miss Bitch is sitting at home with her guitar and her piano and her, you know, typewriter and whatever, creating what she needs to right. to do for fuel for my soul. So it's nice to to have this renaissance. I'm I'm enjoying. Well, it. you've always had uh, like irons in a lot of different fires because you're a singer, you're a writer, mm. l you are an actor, you uh you know tell jokes, you do like so many different things. And I've always felt like in the entertainment industry, those people who have their uh, at least one of their main irons in quote unquote drag mm -hmm. um, have to be able to understand every aspect at least mm -hmm. a little bit so you have to a little bit sing even if you're not great can you can you join us in this yes. you have to be able to write a little bit you have to be able to style something Absolutely. Uh, uh, know what it's like to be behind the camera and what you look like and you right I mean that's a thing and you've always done that I totally agree with you you know and I mean that is for me you know because I have I've had so many managers and agents and and people along the way say you need to hone in on one thing you're you're spread to too far you're trying to do too many things you need to hone in on one thing so people can box you in and i'm like that's exactly what i don't want to do mm -hmm. you know and the the people and the artists that i admire you know people like sander bernhardt oh my gosh. you know and yes. that's kind of how i patterned this show that i'm getting ready to go on tour with after without you i'm nothing you know it's i love people that 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 act and play characters and sing and write and improv and and get political and uh, and add fashion to it as Sandra does. And, you know, I love people like that that do a multiplicity of things, because to me, that is it. They all feed each other. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I can you know, even if I go play a music gig with my acoustic guitar, I'm still going to tell funny stories and jokes in between the songs. Right. You know, and. So, yeah, that's I, I totally agree with you. You know, and I think I found that out when I left college and went to Chicago because I was doing Second City there for improv and I was doing some theater at Steppenwolf and then we opened our own theater company. And I started to realize even before social media became big, you kind of have to be your own creator. You kind of have to be your own producer. And I always wanted it to involve all those things, acting, singing, guitar playing, dancing, improv, all of it, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, that's, I mean, I love that. I just, I get off on all of those yeah. things. Yeah. What goes into like the, like the conceptualization of uh, like an evening without Kelly Mantle, this particular, what, what goes into uh, making the show great? What's the inspiration? A lot of weed. Okay. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. A lot of weed, a lot of wine. <laughs> Those are my, those are my, those are my go-tos. And then from that, uh, craziness is created. Well, you know, it's funny because when they came to me, when Obsessed came to me and said, you know, uh, we were doing the Trixie and Katya live tour, they said, would you want to go on your own little solo tour? And I thought, yeah, definitely. And I thought, you know, I'll do something simple. I'll just do an hour of like stand-up comedy, you know, in like... Something simple? That's so hard. Well, but you know, I mean, well... And, uh, I mean, look at what we have going on right now. We've got, you know, jeans and flannel and tennis shoes and no makeup. And then I would get a Netflix special. Damn. You know? Damn. <laughs> Looking like that. But then I thought, no, maybe I'll just do my music. I'll just do my acoustic guitar and have bring a band along. But then I thought that's going to kind of limit me to the types of music I can play, you know, because I can't really do like a big Broadway number on my acoustic guitar. So I literally did what we just talked about. I said, I, you know, give them theater, give them acting, give them Tallulah Bankhead, darling, you know? Right. And so incorporate all of those mediums into one show. Um, so it's like a comedy show with singing, which is like a cabaret. There's dancing, there's soliloquies, there's improv. Um, I'm singing everything from Lana Del Rey to Broadway. Um, and all of these, and so it's 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 basically a play that I've written uh, that is being performed by all of these characters that I play that are basically the voices living inside my head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's where it all comes from: is my mental illness. I'm turning it into art and commerce. I like and, that. And uh, yeah, it's like a 
fever dream, fun house mirrors. Do, when you're doing that, when you're conceptualizing that and you're coming up with characters, do you ever uh, just get like a block where you're like, this isn't it, and then something just happens? I mean, I don't I don't know the process just because I've never tried. You know, I've been really lucky that I've never had that kind of writer's block thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I never have, uh, and that might be due to the weed and the wine, mm-hmm. um, but I have never had a, a writer's block situation. I am very... Um, cathartic about it I will kind of lock myself into a room Mm -hmm. uh for days and kind of let all of that stuff be manifested and then I'll take like a week away from it okay and then go back to it and revisit it and and say oh I like this but I don't like this but this will go good and oh you know what this made me think of this and you know Mm -hmm. stuff like that yeah Mm -hmm. off camera we were talking about um I was asking you about eating donuts and you said you like to just eat cashews I just eat cashews and lettuce. Cashews and lettuce. Cashews and lettuce. And every once in a while, I'll have like a little dove chocolate, you know. Oh, just a little dove chocolate. Just a little dove but chocolate. But no, you you were specific. <laughs> I'm always on board. You know, I'm so particular about the things that I like to have, which surprises people because, listen, I can eat the house down. But I, I like things in a certain way, right? Uh-huh. Um and you like a certain salad a certain way. And I like how you do your dressing. I'm on board with it. Even if I don't eat it that way, I like when people lay down the law and they're like, this is what I like. This is how I do it. I'm a champion of it. Tell us. I like a grilled chicken salad. Okay. Um, it has to have avocado. Okay. And it has to have some feta cheese. Mm. And what else does it have to have? It has to have um, a light Italian dressing, but then I like a side of ranch to dip the grilled chicken into the ranch. I like that. Yes. And then I like a little um, crouton or two. But soft. But like a little cracker. I actually prefer like a like a little cracker to okay. go with the salad because I think it's a nice little offset to it. Like a, like a saltine or something else? Something no, nicer. like a club cracker, like a mm. buttery kind of salty cracker. Yeah. I like that. Do you like cheese and crackers? Mm-hmm. Like I that? love a good, what is it called? I always get the word wrong, Car- charcuterie. Yeah. I love a good charcuterie board. Honey. Yeah. Give me a charcuterie board, honey, horny, horny. <laughs> I love getting off on a good charcuterie board. Not getting off on it. Yes, girl. Ooh, what about getting yeah. on it? Ooh, I'll get on it. Let's take a break. I'll rub my pussy all over that charcuterie board. Charcuterie. Charcuterie, honey. We are back with Kelly Mantle. Uh, I was snoring during her story. Shut up. I was whoring during her story. I'm a snoring whoring. Wait a minute. What is that single that you released years ago? Uh, (laughs) What was it called? Snoring and whoring? No. You released a single years ago. Speaking of um, creating music. What was that single you released? Well, it was called uh, The Walk in Blues. Walk right in, walk right Shut out. Shut the fuck up. Mm-hmm. I remember that. Yeah. Nobody else remembers it, but that's okay. I totally remember it. It's actually um, on my little rotation when I play uh, music. So I play music on my iPad. Oh. I'm old school. It pops up every once in a while. And you're like, Alexa, please turn that off. Alexa. Please play Maria McKee. Uh, please. Uh, now, you brought you brought a drink Girl. here. Tell me what it is. It's a little uh, bubbly for us, a little champs. Now, how do you open this? Wait, and what are these goblets? Huh? Are these goblets? Well, they're uh, glasses to drink champagne out of. Are I those mean, champagne flutes? We can flutes? drink straight out of the bottle. I don't give a fuck. Are those champagne flutes? Yeah. Well, I don't know about that, but they're fancy glasses. Uh, and is that your fancy water as well? Uh huh. Shut up, girl. <laughs> How often do you? Uh, do you, is this your She's favorite being brand? Mean to me now, y'all. Is this your favorite brand? <laughs> yes. This it, is my. Is favorite. it really? Yes. I don't. I don't. I don't know. Are you a champagne drinker? Like, um, at like a wedding. I'll do it for the toast. I'll do it just like when I wake up. All right, so Pop it. this is to Very Delta. Woo! Oh, That's look pretty. at that. Ooh, oh. Is that the head? Oh, I guess you don't want me doing that to you. It doesn't matter. COVID's over. COVID, COVID never was. I got it from you three times already. What's the what, what Shut up. Once, Did you ever get it? Twice. Three, three times, times later. later. But I love you. you. How sweet. 
I kiss you once. Uh, three times. So shady. Um, how often do you drink uh, this? this how beverage? often do I drink? Right. Every day. Well, should we? Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. I love you, and I love this. This is so. I was telling you in the dressing room. This is so perfect for you. Mm. Oh, that tastes good. Girl, it's so good. Oh, that is good. I like a good dry champagne. It tastes really, really good. Yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. It's dry but fruity. Dry but fruity. Dry but fruity. That's the profile. Mm. Mm. I'm watching you. Mm. Is that how you drink it? Have you ever mm. seen people do it like this? Like they hold the glass like like this. Because I guess it doesn't warm it up or something. That but looks always, like something that, that horrible, like, Donald Trump would do. I always feel like in the early 80s, like, this oh, was sexy. Oh, holding it like that. Like, that's sexy or something. Yes. Right? Like, mm. But maybe that's for red wine to keep it warm. Don't people drink red wine I warm? think so. I think champagne you hold from. Yeah. Is it bruised? Is it burnt? I hope it is. I don't know the difference. I hope it's bruised. I hope it's burnt. I hope that it's dead. Do Trixie and Katya hate you for stealing the show as Sandy, their manager, for the tour? Well, I don't think they hate me for that. I think that they were happy that I did that because it took the pressure off of them to have to <laughs> work hard. No, that um, that experience was fucking amazing. Um, they are two of the coolest fucking chicks in the business. Yeah. Seriously, because the thing I love about them is that, of course, they take their art and their, you know, business seriously, but they don't take themselves seriously. I love that. And we, and because you know, girl, we've worked with some queens who take themselves way too seriously. Right. And uh, they are so much fun. We had such a blast on tour and doing that show. And I love that character, Sandy. So much fun. Do you have a favorite brand of neck brace? Well, I just get my neck brace off of Amazon. Uh -huh. I don't know what the brand is, honestly. Um, but I do know that after wearing it about once or twice, it turns orange right around the neck. Oh. But that kind of fits Sandy, you know? Yeah. You don't really know if it's from her makeup or from the cigarette. So. Yeah. On your tour, mm -hmm. what's in your rider? Weed and wine. Okay. Um, that's they have the to provide that. Weed and wine and water. Um, and I do love a good uh, hummus. I like a hummus. Ooh. Yes, a hummus with a good cracker. Uh -huh. um, what I about like a bad that. cracker? What's a, what would make a bad cracker? A bad cracker is kind of like a like a wheat thin. Or somebody not really in the into KKK? wheat thins. Huh? Somebody in the KKK would be like a bad <laughs> Shut cracker. Shut right? up, girl. Yes, that would make a really bad cracker. Uh -huh. <laughs> But yes, um, or vanilla ice. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> do you have vanilla ice hit on me at the um, what was that called? That the Viper Room, way back in the day. Did you like it? Well, he was hot, but yeah. thank God I didn't end up hooking up with him because he ended up becoming a big old Trump supporter. But, well, that um, was back in the day. That was back in the day before any of that. You were young and free. <laughs> Doing it all hanging But yeah, like a wheat thin. Anything that's like too, cr like it gets in your teeth and stuff. I don't oh, like you don't like a wheat thin? No. I what don't about like a, a Triscuit? Thin. Those are really no, getting in see, your teeth. That's, yeah, that's too much. I like a water cracker. Mmm, that's good. Because whatever you put on it, it's you're nice going to taste that. nice and light. Yeah, you're yes. going to taste what you're dipping it in or spreading yes. on there. Yeah. Because like that's that. really what you're, what you're going for. Mm -hmm. You're going now, for the dip. You ain't going for the cracker. I have a friend um, who says that Oh, did you hear that? No, what was that? It was like a little, I was from the champagne. It's the champagne. Yeah. Because it, it like, bubbles up in you. Yeah. Are you wearing a corset to keep your spirits up? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The writer, do they really have to buy your weed for you? No, I usually like find a way to, to provide my own. Uh -huh. I am a self-sufficient lady. How much, how much does weed cost? Well, it depends on what kind you get. Um, if you want to buy the flower, if you want to buy pre-rolls. Mm -hmm. I'm a pre-roll girl because I don't like to, that's a lot of maintenance mm -hmm. and a lot of like, you know, oh, there we go. There the burp came Yeah, out. I think it's fine when it comes out, honestly. Um, well, I mean, you know, listen, it's natural. It is And natural. if we didn't burp, we would all blow up, I'm assuming. Right. Um. Yeah, I'm like a pre-roll girl. I like a little pre-roll. I'm a sativa girl. I like something that gives you some energy, you know. 
I'm not really sativa. an indica. Now you don't smoke weed. Not since college, no. Not no. since where did you go to college? I just went to a community college. Oh, you did? Yeah. What was your major? Journalism. <laughs> uh huh. That is so perfect. Isn't it funny? I love that. And, and here you are. And here I am. And here you are. Journalist. And I did have a I did have a scholarship to yes. go to USC, mm-hmm. which I did not take. No. No, because that was at the time where I was like, I need to go to beauty school. So then I decided I needed oh, to go to beauty school. And, yeah, so I got my my cosmetology license in 1996. Maybe? And now she has an Emmy. And I've had it active, and it's like, what do I? What maybe one day I need to get behind a chair and do hair? You know what I mean? You should do it. You no. should have done my hair today. Your hair is gorgeous. You look like Betty Page. Really? Yeah, I Ooh, love it. Quit it some more. I love it. Uh. <laughs> Let's take a break. And we are back with Kelly Mantle. We are shooting the shit. This is the segment of the podcast that we call Read Me Delta, where people send in letters. Read Me Delta! Sometimes they need advice. Sometimes they make observations. Uh Sometimes they say, I like your little show. I say things like that. So, you know, it just depends if we maybe sometimes do have things to tell them. And sometimes we uh, have to give them, break the, the, the difficult news gently. By the way, I had to bring you a little gift oh. because you are the queen of fragrance. Stop. You are the queen of fragrance, honey, and I do love a good fragrance. Oh my goodness. So, Thank this you. is just a little something oh gosh, something. We have champagne, we have gifts. Well, girl, you know she comes with the tidings and the tithings. See, the now tithings. here's the thing. Yes. This gift uh-huh. is in a beautiful bag and it's got this on here, which I think is a good idea to write on here. But I have to remember that you personalized this. Well, you because know. if I use this bag later and I will use this bag later, just tear that little thing off. Someone's going to see it and they're going to go to Delta Love <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> and it's going to be like, I don't know, a Father's Day gift or a something. Father's Day gift. <laughs> Ooh, I have never had this. Girl, I am living for this scent. Wow. Fame. Now, I'm actually wearing um, Invictus right now, which okay. is a, another scent of, of theirs. But this uh-huh. Fame is one of my favorites. Wow. And I love the packaging. I love the bottle on it, too. It is beautiful. Isn't that cute? That is beautiful. Oh, and you can also scan to uh-huh. experience the Fame universe. You can. Scan. You can. She has on sunglasses. But yeah, I wanted to, um, what I was going to do, what I planned on doing was I was going to get you um, Debbie Gibson Electric Youth. Oh my gosh, right? But Which I do have a bottle of. Uh-huh. Um, but it wasn't going to be shipped here in time, talking about Amazon Prime. Right. And also, it was like a lot of the reviews on Amazon said they didn't think it was a legit thing. This is beautiful. Thank you. Absolutely. So I think you're going to like it. Paco it's very Ramon. spicy. It's nice. I love that. I know. This is beautiful. This has to go She's just spicy, girl. Put it right here. Okay. So first letter. Yes. Um, I normally have my letter opener, but I don't have it here. So. Greetings, Delta, and esteemed guest. What are your thoughts on funerals? How do you typically feel about the makeup? Should the casket just be closed? Do you prefer cremation burial or an alternative option? What's the most helpful form of sympathy? Large dishes of food, flowers? Is there anything you'd rather not receive? I'm such a huge fan. Your podcast is the only thing that gets me through the workday. Best of love, Phoenix. Thoughts on funerals. I, you know, I... Here's my thing about a funeral. Mm-hmm. And I don't care if you're a, a, a small person or a heavy set person or whatever it is. I just feel weird about people having to be a pallbearer, like carrying the body Isn't from that like the true. Like what? Can't it just be transported some other way? Like why does because that feels like you'd feel like a little guilty. Like I have to do it if I was asked. Right. Right. And then it's all sweaty and hot. And what if you drop no. the casket? Well, but you know, if I was ever asked, I would say no, absolutely not. Yeah, I can't do that. No, uh-uh. I'll be the flower girl. Do they have flower girls at funerals? Uh, you can have whatever you wanted at a funeral. I'll be a flower girl at my own funeral. Um, no, I don't know. That's weird. That's very weird. Um, 
Yeah, being a pallbearer would not be it. Mm -mm. Have you ever seen the documentary The Whites of West Virginia? No. Girl, you got to watch The Whites oh, of West Virginia. Oh, this is Virginia. the this is the uh, in Appalachia. Yes, well Osma uh, Osma loves it. It's yeah. one of her favorites. Yes. And uh they ask uh, one of the women on that. They said, "What do you want uh, to happen at your funeral?" And she said, "I want to snort coke off my forehead and blow smoke in my face." And <laughs> that is exactly what I want to happen at my funeral. I like that. Well, what about food, though? What kind of food would you want to have? There ain't needed to be no food at my funeral. Cashews? No, there ain't got to be no food at my funeral. You know how at a they wedding... They can get some Taco Bell on the way home when they're all fucked up and everything. But you know at a wedding, like, you get you would have, like, little, like, um, Jordan almonds or something. <laughs> what about a seed packet a that you could give man. people? You could give people just a, a seed little packet. Thin mint. A thin mint. Just one. They just go have a thin mint right there on my casket. Have like you ever, your hotel bed. Have you ever been to a funeral and um they're like, if anybody wants to get up and say anything and like oh, nobody wants and you and I feel like because we work somewhat as public speakers, <laughs> I have been to weddings where I'm like I could probably throw together a little seven second on the spot. I should get up and say something. I feel like I maybe other people do want to say something, but they don't know if they can collect themselves. And I'm like, this is your moment to go up and show some respect. And then I'm like, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. But, you know, then there's those ones that get up there and they go on way too long. And you think they're like, they say something that you're thinking, oh, this is the wrap up. And then you're like... And then you realize right. they're continuing. And you're like, no, that should have been the wrap up right there. You right. need to learn how to edit. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm you know, I don't even know. I mean, I, I have a hard time with funerals in general because I really don't want to see their body laying there in a casket. Right. I just don't. And um, I, you know, I'm all for cremation. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually hoping that I get uh, frozen. Okay. Uh, in an ice chest, like share. Uh huh. I've been to funerals where people that do get up to speak, like it just seems like, you know, every people are mourning differently. Yeah. And so when they get up, they're like, they, I know they feel in their heart they want to say what they want to say, and so I think that extemporaneous, like I'm going to shoot from the hip and I'm going to tell you what I think, and I think that's wonderful. But sometimes they start oversharing, or when they start breaking down and they're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You're like, this is really uncomfortable. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, a memorial is fine. But, you know, the other thing, too, I remember my grandma's funeral. You know, we didn't, I, I had nothing to do with planning it because I was very young. So all of her sisters and, you know, the, the people planned it. And they had this preacher up there at the, at the thing talking about her. And I was like, he's like, Mary Catherine was... A very vibrant woman. I was like, she didn't even go by Mary Catherine. Oh, I was like, you didn't even that's know really her. inauthentic. Yeah. I was like, this is weird. Why is this yeah. man talking and he didn't even know her? And everyone's like, well, religion. And I'm like, well, yeah. I mean, you know, they also are waiting for a dead man to come back to life. And they think that someone parted the Red Sea and they think that someone got two of every animal on the right. ark to coexist with one another. Right. And here he is talking about my grandma. So I don't know. It's very weird. And not to even me. using her proper name. No. <laughs> Funerals are passe. Let's move. Let's move on from funerals. Although I, you know, w when the time comes that I pass, if you are not at my funeral <laughs> fucking crying, if you are not causing a scene, if you are not trying to jump in the grave, That's that the means chola you did not you, girl. fucking love me. You didn't That's love the me. That's a chola in you. It is. It is. You want, you want all the Latina family there, honey. I want to see everybody, no matter how <laughs> big or small you are, I want you to be wearing a printed up t-shirt with my picture on it. It says rest a in peace. A black veil. Yeah. <laughs> In size 4X, no matter how big. Or, so the T-shirt goes to your knees. Um, I want you to get things put on the back of the car that says, like, in memoriam. I want fucking all of it. And I want there to be a couple of fist fights because somebody's saying how much they love me more than someone else. Do you want a Facebook memorial page? I need all of it. I'm going to open up a Facebook account again just so I can do that. Just so you can have a I've Facebook memorial page. I really would love to have at my funeral... Um, hire like some like really really scary looking people to show up and like just like bow at the casket and be like thank you we're gonna miss you boss 
You know what I mean? And then like maybe some shady ladies with like umbrellas. <laughs> well, all of our friends are shady ladies. Well, so does it fucking matter? It won't be too hard. And a mariachi yeah, band. That won't be too hard. Okay. <laughs> Dear Delta and stunning guests. Oh, quite a stunning. They knew you were going to be here. <laughs> Growing up, what was your relationship with Chef Boyardee canned goods and Campbell's SpaghettiOs? Were what? you a fan? Would you ever consider picking some up from your local grocer to eat as an adult today? Is canned pasta very Delta? Love yours very Allen. Wow. Would you eat Chef Boyardee or, or um, what were the other ones? Um... Campbell's SpaghettiOs. Campbell's SpaghettiOs. We didn't have those as a kid. I, we, my family, uh, my mom didn't buy those things. No, I do remember Campbell's vegetable beef soup. Uh huh. I would always have that or the chicken noodle when I was sick. Mm -hmm. It'd always be the go-to when you're sick. You know? I will say this. I, maybe this is a weird observation, but we're similar in age. Um, I don't remember chicken nuggets being such a popular thing when I was a kid. No. That wasn't a thing. Uh -uh. I mean, I'm not gonna. Add, I'm not gonna. Do you remember chicken pot pies though? Oh yeah, those little chicken pot pies that came in the little aluminum foil. Uh huh. Shit and you put them in the oven. Or do you remember those little Mama Celeste pizzas? <laughs> those were a thing. No. They're like a dollar. <laughs> no. I also remember when you would get a frozen dinner and it would have like. Um, oh yeah, the little entree and then the little apple. Cause I always wait. I the dessert was my favorite. Yes. And then it had the peas, and I'd skip uh -huh. the peas. Oh, I never have the mashed potatoes. But then that little apple. That's what you want, girl. That's I'd what... I'd eat that and watch the Carol Burnett show, the mm -hmm. little reruns of the Carol Burnett show, and Little House on the Prairie. I remember as a kid when Mash music came on, you should have already been in bed. Mash. <laughs> when Mash came on, it was like you. Why are you not in bed? <laughs> That is time to go that to is bed. Hilarious. Yeah, for Mash. sure. Um, I also remember this thing that my mom would get, and I don't know that you can get it anymore. Maybe you can, but it was like an eight piece of banquet chicken, and you would take it out of the box and you would lay it out on your oven uh, really? on your cookie sheet, and your family would eat like fried chicken that you cooked in the oven. Oh wow! Yeah, I mean, and that was called banquet. Banquet was the brand. Banquet. Banquet fried chicken. I don't think they had that at the Piggly Wiggly. No? No. Wait, well, you probably fried your own chicken. You probably killed your own chicken. Did you well, kill no, your Well, no, my mother did not cook. Okay. Is, she didn't even, she didn't know. God, no. I what? don't know anything about domestication. Why? Well, because I don't ever go in the kitchen, really. I don't really know my way around there that well. Honey, that's how you keep a man. <laughs> Well, I've kept many a men without having to know how to do that. Thank God. You've, you've, Thank God you've my vagina is like an oven, honey. It just kept, opens have up. Have you ever been and... a kept woman, even for a minute? No. I wouldn't Vanilla even know ice. where to begin. I know how to turn on the microwave. Vanilla Ice was trying to keep you. Vanilla Ice was not up in my oven, honey, and I wasn't going to cook him dinner. In either. your loving oven? My loving oven. <laughs> you, uh, no, you know, I don't know anything about cooking. My mom didn't cook. We ate at Sonic. You know what I I think that like a lot of people don't don't realize, but you can do and it's fun to do, is go on YouTube and you can type in some of your favorite uh entertainers' names. And aside from seeing individual videos, sometimes a reel will pop up. Really? And it's like the Kelly Mantle acting reel. Oh. Or the Willem acting reel. Oh. And a lot of people who may only uh, know you from Drag Race and then follow your career after that uh -huh. don't realize that like you have done so much acting and all they have to do is type in your name <laughs> and you're like, wait, she was on that? Oh my God, she was on that? She was on that. And a lot of the shows, you know, that they may not even be familiar with the shows and then they go from there. But you have done so much of that shit. I have. I'm exhausted. You are exhausted. I am exhausted. Have you ever had like a tiny residual check where you were like, I don't even want to cash it? Girl. I mean, I, mean, I love the big residual checks. Sure. But yeah, I get residual checks sometimes for like one cent or three cents. And they've uh -huh. spent more on the postage to send the residual for three but cents. But they just had to cover their ass yeah, and exactly. do what they had to do. I'm like, Okay. Oh my god, that is so funny. <laughs> that is so funny. Would you yeah. do another TV show if it presented itself, or is that something? You... Absolutely. I mean, we're on strike now, right. um, which is crazy. But yeah, I just finished shooting a pilot. Um, you know, I've shot millions of pilots in my lifetime. Well, not millions, but a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll see if it gets picked up or not. But you know, I love creating my own stuff because every time I go in for these TV gigs, I always try to find a way to work with them to see if we can kind of rewrite it some way to make it good right 
there's a lot sense. of shit on television. Yeah. You know, and is. sometimes you do it for the paycheck, but then uh, sometimes you get lucky and you get to kind of uh, sit with the writers and the people and hopefully, you know, come mm -hmm. up with a little bit better dialogue. Would you uh, consider being in the reboot of Too Close for Comfort? Never. No? You don't <laughs> see yourself? What is Too Close for Comfort? You don't remember that show from the 80s? Is what that about? the one with um, Valerie Bartinelli? No, but the, uh, De what was her name? Deborah Van... Mm, Wait, what's Too name. Close for Comfort? It was like um, Ted Knight and his wife were were in lived in the house, and then the two daughters were like grown, oh. and they were gorgeous—a blonde and a brunette. Okay. Or would you want to be? Um, would you want to play Vera in the reboot of Alice? I was going to say Alice. I would totally do Alice. Yeah. But you know, I know I'm more. I, I know I'm more of a Vera. It would be hard to say no to Flo. Oh, you could do Flo. All you need is the wig. Sheila could do Flo. Oh, My character Sheila from the Browns yeah. could do Flo. But I am a Vera. Like Kelly's a Vera, but Sheila could do Flo. It's kind of like Steel Magnolias. Mm -hmm. I would love to play Weezer, and Sheila could play Weezer. But I'm more of a. Um, Oh, what's the one that... Oh, nobody moved. I lost my contact. A nail. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm that one. Do you think I could be Mel in Alice? Girl, you would be um, uh, Clarie. Ooh. You would be Olympia Dukakis Clarie. Yeah. You know I what they say. <laughs> if you don't have something nice to say, come sit next to me. <laughs> That would be you. I love it. I would love. I would love you to do something so like that. You would so be Clarice. We should do a. Two, we should totally do a stage reading of that. We should. That would, would be love so much that. fun. I always wanted to do. Um, I mean, I'm sure I've thrown this Drink out there somewhere. Drink your juice, Shelby. <laughs> Is the Willem uh, could play Shelby? <laughs> she could. She could. Then we could kill her off. Like a, a what is it? Those people do like the 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 Golden Girls live. Why is there not a Designing Women live? Girl, they did a Designing Women, and Candace Kane did the. Um, I think no, it was Sherry Vine that did the. Uh, and Night the lights, lights went out Georgia. in Georgia. Yeah. They did a Designing Women, and uh, Candace was a guest star, and it was Sherry and Jackie. Um, they're at Casita one. Del Campo. I know. I love that show. I'll be Anthony. Girl, I did a charity event with Delta Burke back in the day. Uh -huh. And uh, we got so wasted. Really? <laughs> backstage, yes. And we were out there trying to give these awards and stuff. And How fun. We were cracking each other up and we couldn't stop laughing. Did you? Was it champagne or what? You've met her, right? Uh, I'm assuming. Yeah, just one time. One time, yeah, at the... Uh, there was like an Emmys nominee thing, and she, Gerald McCraney was there for oh, the I show. Oh, I remember that. Your pictures yeah. with her. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She was very, very nice. They were both super, super lovely. Love that. Well, thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. This blows by fast. It does blow by fast. Yeah. Smoke? I love to smoke. Do you weed. ever go smoke weed every day? Smoke weed every day. I don't even, I'm not even soliciting this. This is just, she just does this. Look, this is how you model through it. Uh, this is how you model through it. Uh, this is it. Uh, when you're all legs, you have to put them out. You have to showcase them. When you have shoes like that, custom suits, hair, Betty Page. Give well, us a Betty Page pose. It's been wonderful being on your show. Thank you for having me. Look at that. Tune in next week when we have, who do we have next week? Tune in next week when we have, who do we have? <laughs> Shut up. Do you see that? What? Huh? Huh? Oh, no, I was just telling everybody about how you were modeling. Shut up. Modeling through it. Are you making fun of me again? How could I possibly? What is this mask? This is mask for mask. I love that. Yeah. Looks like this, Willem. It does a little bit. Um, this is... Uh, I, I have these out to give myself like a, do you remember when you would like the makeup artist at Mac would do like a face chart? This is my face <laughs> no, chart. I've never had a face chart done. That's why I look like I look. You don't do I look chart. like I've had a face chart Yes, no. you do. No, this is all color by numbers. I have no color idea by what Kelly. I'm doing. <gasps> that is your makeup line, color by Kelly. Color by Kelly. And it'll be like a, It'll be like a side profile, like tucking the hair behind the ears, and you'll go, Color by Kelly. Next on Trixie Cosmetics. Colors Color by, Kelly. by Kelly. I love that. Color by Kelly. I like that. Thank you for listening and watching Very Delta. 
A special hello to everyone on YouTube. Please subscribe to Mom Podcast so you do not miss an episode. Also, search for Very Delta on your podcast apps where we come out every Monday as well as here on the Mom Podcast YouTube channel. Send all of your questions to readmedelta at gmail.com and you can follow me on Instagram at Delta Work. You can also follow the show on Instagram and TikTok at Very Delta because if you're not, you're really only getting 50% of the Delta. And also, where can people find you on social media? People can find me on the corner of Santa Monica and Highland next to the Del Taco. Do you remember that? I do. Oh, girl, I, I do. Um, I am on uh, Instagram at Kelly Mantle, Twitter at The Kelly Mantle. Um, I just joined TikTok. Like three weeks ago. Love. And I think that's the Kelly Mantle. I love it. That's perfect. Yeah. Join me next week right here. And until then, make sure you are keeping things very Delta. This episode of Very Delta was brought to you by Orange Diamond, the official emoji of the Very Delta show. To listen to Very Delta one day early and ad free, sign up for Mom Plus at mompodcasts.plus. Very Delta is produced by Moguls of Media, a.k.a. Mom. Hosted by Delta Work and produced by Mark Jacobs. Engineered by Margot Padilla and editing by Doug Robertson. Executive produced by Willem Belli, Alaska Thunderfuck, Big Dipper, and Joe Cilio. 